Hello, everyone. This is Miss Lindsay. Today we're going to talk about section 10.6 regarding more angle arc theorems. Some of these theorems you're going to see are review, but again, we're just putting them in theorem form. We've already discovered them. First theorem, if two inscribed or tangent chord angles intercept congruent arcs, then they are congruent. Therefore, if the arc's incongruent, the inscribed angles are going to have the same measure. So x would actually equal y, or it would be actually congruent. x would be congruent to y. The next theorem, also regarding inscribed angles. So two inscribed or tangent chord angles intercept the same arc. Therefore, they would be congruent. So if they inscribe the same arc, x would be congruent to y as well. Next one deals with ice cream cone. The theorem states the sum of the measures of a tangent tangent angle and its minor arc equals 180. Again, we've discovered this in class, so we know the minor arc and the tangent tangent angle would be supplementary, so the x plus y would equal 180. And we actually proved this in class the other day, so I'm not going to review over that. But basically, um, we proved it a couple different ways. The easiest way is to show that we have a quadrilateral, and knowing the angles add up to 360. The last theorem, we have an angle inscribed in a semicircle as a right angle. So here, again, if we know AC is the diameter, therefore arc AC would be 180 angle X would have to be 90 degrees. So therefore, it would be a right angle. Again, quite a few of those were review. So let's jump to some examples here. First one, we have a circle inscribed in a triangle. If you notice, we have ice cream cone in three different positions there on the top, the left, and the right. And from the theorem that we just did in two slides ago, we know that angle X would be supplementary with the minor arc AB, therefore we get angle X to be 35 degrees. And now we can just use the sum of the angles of a triangle, add up to 180 degrees, therefore we would get angle Z to be 97 degrees. And getting a little bit of review there from section 10.5. Moving on to the next example. Let's mark our diagram here. So given that arc BC is congruent to arc ED, so we'll mark that on there, can we prove that BE is parallel to CD? Segment BE parallel to segment CD. Well, let's draw something in here to help us out a little bit. Let's draw one of the diagonals. Okay, so if I draw a diagonal B to D, this thing gives me a couple inscribed angles. That would give me an inscribed angle at C, D, B. That would be congruent to the inscribed angle D, B, E, because these arcs are going to be the same measure. Therefore, the inscribed angles would be the same measure. So we just showed alternate interior angles are congruent. Therefore, yes, BE would be parallel to CD. Okay, so that proves our second example. Moving on to our third example. Here we have a quadrilateral, ABCD is inscribed in a circle. Several of this is already marked on the diagram. AB is 12, BC is 16, CD is 10. And let's mark the next one. Angle ADC is a right angle. We want to find the measure of AD. So I'll just call that X. Well, let's go ahead and draw in AC. Now the question is, does that actually go through the center? And because we know angle ADC is a right angle. We definitely know that's an inscribed angle. Vertex D is on the circle, therefore AC is definitely a diameter. Because of that, we have a semicircle. We have arc ABC would be equal to 180 degrees. 
oops, pardon me, marked that the wrong spot, as well as arc ADC would also be 180 degrees. Therefore, we can conclude that the inscribed angle B would be 90 degrees. Now we have a triple with our triangle, our right triangle ABC. We have a triple. It's a 3, 4, 5. So we'd get AC to be 20. Then we can move back over to the right triangle on the right hand side, ACD. And we can use Pythagorean theorem 20 squared equals 10 squared plus x squared. x squared would be equal to 300. And we will reduce that. Always want to write an exact, simplified exact form if we can. Therefore, AD is equivalent to 10 square root 3. Next example. Here we have M is the midpoint of arc AB. So we can mark AM and arc MB are going to be congruent. Therefore, we know the inscribed angle C and the inscribed angle D would be congruent. We can set x plus 7 equal to 3x minus 31. If we solve for x, we will get x equal to 19. What are we actually looking for? We're actually looking for the measure of arc CD. Well, if we plug 19 into 4x minus 15, that'll give us the inscribed angle M. So angle M would equal 4 times 19 minus 15, which would give us 61 degrees. And then we can double that to get the measure of arc CD to be 122 degrees. And last but not least, we have two circles, O and P. They're tangent at point F. We also know that AC and CE are tangent to circle P at points B and D. We have the measure of arc DFB is 223. I'm going to highlight that in red. That is 223 degrees. We are looking for the measure of arc A. AE. Okay. So let's take a look here. Uh, first of all, again, using the fact that we have the measure of arc DFB is equal to 223 degrees, we can find, switching colors here, arc BD by subtracting that from 360 and get this to be 137 degrees. That then helps us find angle C. Okay, angle C. So if we take angle C, and we know, again, we have ice cream cone here. So if I drew that on the side, here's C, B. This is 137, the arc from B to D. We have ice cream cone here, so we know that angle C would be 43 degrees. So I'm using the smaller circle P to find angle C. Now, if you look at the larger tri I'm sorry, larger circle, now we know C is an inscribed angle. The vertex is on the circle. So to find arc AE, we would just need to simply double that. Again, if you need to redraw that, so we have AE. We get C is 43, so we can double that to get the arc. AE of 86 degrees. Okay. And this concludes section 10.6.